Welcome back to Terror by the Bay. I'm David. Happy days are here again. Another one of those uh, times to, for cause to celebrate. Apparently, in Michigan, uh, fake electors are being charged. And um, 16 fake electors were charged um, from Michigan last summer. And uh, CNN reported about that in December. One of those charged has agreed to cooperate with uh, the investigation. The remaining 15 defendants pleaded not guilty. Uh, the special agent in charge of this, Howard Schock, <laughs> we got some great names going on here between Pecker and Schock and everything else. Um, <clears throat> he's one of the lead investigators in this probe. <clears throat> was asked to confirm if specific people are co-conspirators. And Schock answered yes when the lawyer asked about Donald Trump, Mark Meadows, Rudy Giuliani, and Jenna Ellis. Um, we would point out that um, Ellis did plead guilty in the uh, Georgia case. Uh, uh, Trump, Giuliani, Meadows, and Ellis currently are, are not facing charges in Michigan, but they're all indicted in Georgia. Uh, Ellis has already pleaded guilty and um, wrote her apology letter and is now helping out. To go with that, uh, Arizona just announced their grand jury handed over indictments for the 11 individuals who acted as fake electors, but they've also indicted Boris Epstein, Mark Meadows, and Rudy Giuliani, and Donald Trump is co-conspirator number one. <laughs> you know, the justice system is moving really, really slow, and that is aggravating but it is moving. So let's look at the energy for these two fake elector uh, announcements. Uh, let's look at the, the energy is, because I'm gonna assume that if, you know, if one's working, the other's working. Um, in Michigan, they had Ken Chesbrough um, providing details. I'm assuming they gave him uh, immunity on this. I'm, I'm assuming that I haven't uh, gone to look that up. But let's look at the energy around the Michigan and Arizona indictments for the fake electors and how that's looking. Entertainment purposes only. Well, here's my Jack Smith card here. Now, this is not Jack Smith per se doing this investigation, but information could have come from Jack Smith's January 6th investigation uh, and been disseminated. Much in the same way that Robert Mueller, when he was doing the Mueller report, he... Um, he disseminated information that was sort of out of scope of what they were doing, but he farmed it out to uh, other attorney generals to pick up and run with it. So while this may not be Jack Smith per se, it's that Jack Smith energy of holding the folks that were involved in all the different aspects of the January 6th coup attempt. Uh, it's starting to hold them accountable. The, the King of Swords has arrived. Cross with the Knight of Pentacles. Um, with the higher fan underneath. Okay, so the Knight of Pentacles going forward with something of value. This is the, if you're going to uh, provide state, be a state witness, not just plead not guilty, but actually provide help, now is the time. It would have been time before the indictment, but now that you've been indicted and now that you know it's um, it that, you know, they have felonies out for your butt. This is the time that you lawyer up and you and your lawyer go down there and you know, <laughs> sell yourself and all the information you have and cut the best deal that you can get. It would have been better if you did it beforehand and cooperated, but now that the charges are here, you better get moving because the first one to the Jack Smiths with that, with it will get the best deal and the person in second place gets a less best deal, so on and so forth. Underneath it all, it's the government. This is, this is trying to overthrow our elections. This is assaulting democracy. Mm. And you could also look at this as these are the fake electors. These are the the folks that went forward knight of cups would have worked well too but you know they've got this fake sheet of paper saying that they're the real electors for donald trump and to ignore the democratic ones oh look at that look at that tower card 
that's ready to come up. <laughs> it might be the, in the current situation. In the past, we have the Four of Swords. We've heard about the fake electors, but things have gone really quiet on that front. Um, I don't know why it wasn't investigated sooner or more quickly. Uh, again, I, I'm not trying to judge uh, current administration folks or anything along those lines, but it's like uh, we had heard about this during the election that, you know, they wanted to delay things and that there are multiple electors. But it's like these guys were lying in wait, you know, just kind of like waiting to see what happens. Investigations are going on. But um, lying in wait is not an option anymore because the indictments are here. This is a beautiful card. Current situation is the Six of Cups. Here are the people, the party of law and order. They were just doing what they were told. These are the lead, and mind you, the people that are indicting, these aren't like, you know, Gladys Kravitz. It's not the, the nosy neighbor next door. These are the leaders of the Republican Party in their various states. You know, the party chairs and co-chairs, vice chairs. Um, these are the who's who <clears throat> of Republicans just willingly uh, trying to uh, participate in a coup. And I, I will not buy many stories of, I didn't know I was ignorant. You know what? <laughs> You're signing a document. I don't care if a lawyer is telling you that's okay. You should have probably consulted a different lawyer. That lawyer lied to you and you signed it. You were naive. <laughs> foolish, foolish child with what you did. And now you're facing felonies for your foolishness. You better make your deal really quick and see if you can get these things bumped down to a misdemeanor and maybe you won't have to spend any time in prison. Just saying. That's why I said this car is great because it's just that naivety that, oh, here, just take this fake elector scheme. Oh, sure, I'll do anything you say. <clears throat> Overarching energy is the world. Yeah, their, their world's about to come crashing down. This, These investigations have wrapped up, and now it's time to start charging people. And it'll be a couple of waves. They're going to go after the fake electors first, and then after that, they're going to go after the unindicted co-conspirators, uh, Donald Trump being among them. Um, again, currently in Michigan, uh, Epstein, uh, Giuliani, and Meadows, and Trump are not charged. But it sounds like from this article, they are charged in Arizona. Trump is not charged in either state, but the different states and their different uh, grand juries have moved things, things along. We're bringing an end to cycle. This is going to bring an end to the coup because now that there's consequences for their actions, this is really going to dissuade future um, coup members that they're going to recruit future fake electors because now they're going to realize that, oh, this is a felony. I could be going to prison. <laughs> there we go. That's right. I saw that card. The lesson to be learned is the tower card. Yeah, this is it. You want to end your career? Hang out with Trump. Just don't do whatever Trump lawyer tells you to do. You know, Walt Nada, you might want to take notes on this one. This is going to be the undoing of... Again, I think this is bringing the coup to an end. This is going to be the blowing the top off of the coup uh, by getting the fake electors, getting all these stories and everything in the courts, and going after. And then you're basically going after the, the top people in it after you get the uh, these foot soldiers and lieutenants knocked out. Lesson or the outcome is the high priestess. The smart ones are going to testify. They're just going to spill their guts. You know, they will go in for those interviews like Michael Cohen did. And they will be asked questions. And they, if they are wise, they will give truthful answers to all the questions that are being asked. Provide the roadmap of what happened. Um, part of the thing with these investigations, I mean, don't get me wrong. They, they do want to punish people for, um, for, for these events. But they also want to understand how did it happen so that you know where the, the gaps are in the system, the blind spots in the system, so that you can uh, plug them up. By the way, the next card is the Ten of Cups, the, the happy endings here. 
for the United States, this is probably going to be lead to some happy endings. One, because some people are going to be held accountable. And two, we will find out where the gaps are and where the laws need to be changed and what guardrails need to be put in place and stuff like that. Mind you, uh, from everything that that uh, we've been seeing, Trump probably may not live long enough to see uh, to be accountable to these charges. Or if he does live long enough, he may not be healthy enough to stand trial for these. But regardless, all the people that enabled him, it's again, realize that Donald Trump, Donald Trump's like the zit on your face. He's the whitehead that gets popped, but underneath it is everything else. And that's the stuff, the enablers and the, the yes men and all these all these narcissistic sharks that are just uh, grabbing for power. They're the ones that need to be taken out too. You need to get rid of all of this. Okay. Um, with Let's focus on the Arizona one right now. Uh, since that's the late breaking news here. Um, will... Uh, <laughs> Will many of the uh, Arizona fake electors uh, try and cut plea deals to get themselves out of trouble? Full card, awesome, new journey form. This is something new, something different. Could be very foolish, depending on your life choices here. So far, I'm not real excited with your life choices, but hey, your life, not mine. Yeah, um, and the Empress and the Star card. Three major arcana. Will some flip? Oh yeah, some are gonna flip. Some are gonna realize, oh, I better get again. I better get there first because the person who gets there first gets the best deal. They get taken care of the best. So the higher up you are, as long as you're not the top, we we save the star. The stars are gonna get convicted. You know your your Boris Epstein's, Rudy Giuliani's, and um, Mark Meadows. Don't expect those guys are going to get much of a, a, a plea deal. You know, if they plead guilty, they're still going to get lengthy prison sentences. It's these other schmucks that were doing what they were told. They're the ones that can save their bacon and, uh, you know, maybe get away with probation or something along those lines. But, yeah, folks need to, to move quickly and start this new journey. They need to take care, think about themselves and their family and their future going forward and help out with this. Star witnesses is what they're looking for here. But also realize that the, the, the highest stars are not going to be the ones that get good deals. There's no way Rudy Giuliani, Boris Epstein, or Mark Meadows is going to get an immunity deal unless <clears throat> they feel that they need those deals in place in order to get somebody higher up, like co-conspirator number one, who would be, allegedly be Donald Trump for entertainment purposes only. In the past, we got the Page of Pentacles, um, my card of grifting. Um, th these, again, foolish people do, making immature choices of things of value. Um, they were convinced to do this. They thought that basically they were going to impart their values onto the rest of us. They were going to be, you know, very popular and uh, really well liked and admired by Donald Trump and his ilk. And so they foolishly went ahead and did this. Asking if they're going to flip. Yeah. <laughs> you think? Current situation. There's going to be a lot of sleepless nights for a lot for 11 people in Arizona. <laughs> At least 11 people of the fake electors. I imagine Ep Epstein, um, Juliana Meadows will have Sleepless nights, too, but for different reasons. Uh, different reasons being that they're probably not going to get plea deals. These folks, they need to really start thinking about plea deals. And the reality that they could be uh, convicted of felon felonies and going to prison. They tried to steal an election. Plain and simple. You did this to yourself. I, I got nothing else to say. This card says it all right there. You tried to steal an election. What, what did you think you were doing? <sighs> the lesson to be learned is they got bamboozled. 
a lot of them are going to say they got bamboozled by the lawyers. Uh, Epstein or whoever it was convinced them that it was okay, an okay thing to do. They were just they were just following orders, you know. They said that we could do this and we could, you know, get Trump back in there and it was perfectly legal. Y'all done. Your critical thinking skills got checked at the door, apparently. You drink the Kool-Aid. You drink deep from the Kool-Aid. You're in a cult of personality. And you were easily fooled because you wanted to be fooled. Outcome is the moon card. You don't know what your fate's going to be. They may, not, may or may not give you a very good plea deal. You won't know until you ask. But, you know, cult members, your cult members are crazy. Will they get plea deals? Possibly. Will they be good ones? I don't know. It depends, what, it depends how much of the mystery you reveal of what's going on behind the moon in the story. The more information you can give, the better off you are. But mind you, we are talking about 11 people being indicted, which means they've already done the investigations and they've shown that there's it's more likely than not that a crime was committed after seeing the evidence. Now, mind you, the evidence hasn't been challenged by a defense team. Witnesses haven't been cross-examined. That's not what grand juries do. Grand juries look at the evidence and decide, you know, was a crime, was it more likely a crime was committed? And then they vote to indict somebody so that they can be charged with a crime in the court system. And then a court case is set up to demonstrate, uh, the prosecution tries to demonstrate, uh, show the evidence that, of the crime that was committed and who was involved with it. So we're, we're in that stage now where the indictments have happened and the criminal tri trial has not yet happened. And this is now the time to cut your best deal. Now, for the for the key lieutenants here, the key players, the Mark Meadows, Rudy Giuliani's, and Boris Epstein's, how are they feeling right now? Because that's two states, plus whatever you got going on in Georgia. What's I should say how they feeling? What's the energy around them? Let me let me shuffle a little bit more just so that. We can pretend that, <laughs> that that me saying, what's the energy around these guys? Now that these Arizona indictments have been announced, um, that there it's been revealed that they're um, unindicted co-conspirators in Michigan, and many of them, I can't remember if Epstein is facing charges in Georgia, but they're also facing charges in Georgia where they have been indicted. What's the energy around them? This is the end. Yeah, this is the end of the coup. This is the end of the line for them. This, it's Jeff. Yeah, it's just the end. The world card. We've, we're, we're bringing this, this chapter to a conclusion. And now they're at a crossroads. Mmm, I like it. Yeah, because again, just like I was saying with the other ones, this is your opportunity, your last chance to spill your guts and sing like a canary. You're still going to prison. It's just. How long? Where on history are you going to end up? And there's the fool card. You know, you're going to be. It's your. How funny! The world card is the last of the major arcana. The fool card is the first. So we are ending this phase of their lives. They're at a crossroads now, and it's a new phase that's beginning. I I keep seeing this off to the side here. I've got my. Uh, a piece of malachite in a golden healer tower surrounded by my little crystals in case you're wondering what's what's going on on the sidebar over there because you can kind of see it on the side and then got the microphone down here <laughs> i digress <laughs> in the past we got the seven of wands um fight there yeah, just trying to fight these charges uh Mark, Mark, Mark Meadows always trying to get the venue moved out of Georgia or move to different uh, venues or say that um, he was, you know, he's just the chief of staff and he was setting up meetings so he shouldn't be indicted. There all these charges, all these different ways that uh, these three clowns um, 
have tried to avoid accountability, fighting it in the court system uh, prior to um, the indictments. Current situation is the Page of Swords. Now, you know, now's the time to be the snitch. You don't want to be the snitch? That's fine. You can go to prison for a length of time. <laughs> Nobody's going to miss you. It'd be nice if you, you spilled your guts and told us everything that happened so that we know who the, the, the ringleaders are. But again, when you're getting up to the Mark Meadows, Rudy Giuliani, and Boris Epstein's of the world, you're pretty much at the top. There's only one person above you. You know, it's going to be Trump above you, maybe a Supreme Court justice, but it's going to be basically be Trump at this point. Maybe an attorney general, too. You know, there's there's not there's not much room left above you in this case. What would this reading be without the drunken hillbilly brawl card over the whole thing? Mayhem is about to ensue. <laughs> um, yeah, Rudy may not survive this. <laughs> Rudy's going to try and drink himself to death to avoid accountability on this one. Mark Meadows and Boris Epstein probably aren't going to be so lucky. Their livers are probably going to hold up. Um, there is going to be a flurry of activity because now it's information and damage control time. How no? What have they been? They haven't seen the indictments yet. We don't know what the fake electors have been indicted for, um, but the evidence is going to start coming out. And there's going to have to be a mad scramble and damage control done. You know, <laughs> literally, who are you going to blame for this? Uh, reminds me of, um, you know, the final gun scene, the good, the bad, and the ugly with uh, Lee Van Cleve, Clint Eastwood, and I'm drawing a blank on the ugly uh, guy's name. Um, you know, your three-way gunfight, you know, you're looking left or right, who are you going to shoot first? That's pretty much what's going to happen here. Who are you going to throw under the bus to save yourself? There's like five drowning people <laughs> trying to dunk the other ones to keep their head above water. <sighs> Lesson to be learned is the King of Cups. <sighs> um, I don't know if that's a person or just a general feeling here. The general feeling would be King of Cups is about emotional maturity and, you know, making decisions that are emotionally mature as opposed to blinded by passion. And it could very well, you know, the thing is, I look at this card, I kind of see like a Mark Meadows type thing. Oh, now this is Biden. You could try asking Biden for a pardon, but that's not going to work in this case because these are state charges. I think that's what it is. This over the lesson the, the lesson we learned from this, Biden can't help you. If Trump were elected, Trump can't help you. There is no federal pardon for state crimes. That's what this is saying. Hey, that card looks familiar, huh? You know, you brought up these fake elector stuff. You it's you know, it, now it's time to bring things of value to the prosecution. You're starting a new phase of your life. You don't want to spend the rest of your life in prison. You better start talking and you better bring the receipts. Or else this is going to be your life from now on. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes, and it looks like we're getting to the, uh, the finale. <laughs> You're going to get the door number one, door number two, door number three choices. And you'd be so lucky if it's only a donkey that's behind those doors. Because <laughs> there's so much worse that's going out there. Okay. Um, spirit, just a, a quick little spiritual hit here. Anything else? little four-carter. Anything else we need to know about uh, these two, um, these two uh, state crimes and the key players on them? Anything else you want to share with this? Anything of enlightenment. Let's see. Little four card and we'll wrap it up. King of Wands. Okay. I was talking about Merrick Garland earlier. Uh, well, January 6th stuff is Merrick, Gar Merrick Garland oversight. I do think that the Department of Justice shared information with the state attorney generals on this one. So this could just be your state attorney generals. 
Let's call it that. You got the star card, page of wands, eight of cups, two of cups. All right, what do we have? I think it's one of the, I think um, this could be, again, the Attorney General uh, Merrick Garland sending out, you know, finding out information during the January 6th investigation and then sharing that information with state attorney generals. It provided them with the key players that were going on. And it was information that was too granular. Maybe it wouldn't be a federal crime. It would have been a state crime. So I think this is the feds and the state AGs working together and making the decisions on, on uh, stuff that was found. That would be very key. You know, the feds kept the fed stuff, but the stuff the feds couldn't use, they sent over to the, um, the states. And the states are now prosecuting uh, that information. And I think the other thing, if you want to break it down even more granularly, if this was the states, the states are now going to start making their plea deals with people. Now, start telling us about the journey that you were on and who the key players were, who was, you know, who, what, where, when, why, and how. You can be a star witness or you can go to prison. The choice is yours. That's that, that very succinctly sums up. Man, I could have made this a five minute reading had I just done that one. <laughs> oh, but then you wouldn't hear all the snarky comments and, and the giggles that come with it, right? All right. Okay. Thank you very much for watching this video and supporting my channel. I appreciate it. Thank you for the likes, shares, comments, everything you do to. Uh, be the YouTube algorithm so that my video makes it out to a wider audience. Hiding over in the corner is a cat. You can't see him. He's black. Where is he? He's right there in that chair, sleeping. Don't know why. <laughs> Anyways, you get to see more of this room here. Uh, for new people new to this channel, welcome to the channel. Uh, we were cat free in this one, mostly. Uh, yeah, although he's sleeping in the corner. We don't always have cats, but when we do, it's a black cat. Uh, I hope you found this reading insightful, and I'll catch you on the next one.